Okay, welcome to part two. If you didn't see part one, go back and watch part one before you watch part two, but this is part two. Right, first thing to show you, look. We have a torpedo, a Mark 15. But the thing I love about this, I've seen so many of them in, in the past, but I've never seen inside one. You can see exactly how they work there, so, you know, if you've got any spare scrap hanging around in your back garden, just follow the instructions as I'm showing you, and you can have your own torpedoes and start your own war. So this is a fairy fulmar. Why they called it a fairy, I do not know. Please don't ask me, I've no idea. But a fulmar is a bird. It's a bit like an albatross. It's from the albatross family. Not a lot of people know that I know that, but I do know that. I didn't know that, I'll be honest, completely honest with you, I just read it on a sign down there. This is a Grumman Martlet, and this is the last remaining one in the world. America ordered 81 of these for World War II, um, and that's the last one standing, made by France, in France, for the Americans. Okay, let me try and get my facts right. It was made by the Americans. The Americans made 81 of them, but they made them for France. And it's the last remaining one. Um, they were French. The other 80 ran away. They are somewhere, but no one's ever seen them since. And if you'd like to know why they did it in this green camouflage look, it's so that when it's in the forest, nobody can, no enemy can see it. It doesn't really make any sense, does it? Why have they painted it that colour? It should be like grey, although underneath, I'll admit, it is like a greyy blue. But they should just paint it all like sky colour, so it's, it's, nobody can see it. Just a bit of a tip, you know, for you uh, people who make planes, or paint them. That's just a Corsair, whatever that is. I've just had an idea of why it might have been painted green. When they're making it, it might be, if they might be making it near some woodland and it's to camouflage it so that it's not bombed whilst they're building it. That might be the reason why. Hmm, never thought about that one, did you? A quick update on who's donated in the last 24 hours. We've had three donations. Neil White, $30. Away ye go, ye mug ye. A Scottish guy, uh, £10. Not his real name, I'm sure. And Tony Cat, Tony, who is the manager at Sparkford Hall, where I was detecting yesterday. Massive thank you, Tony. £50. So, the total now, so far, is £30,457. Please keep the donations coming in, people. You know, three donations, and one of them was the guy I met yesterday. So let's call it two donations from people who watched my videos. It's not a lot, is it, when I'm getting seven to 10,000 views per video. So get the donations coming in, guys. Uh, go to diggingthecoast.com and click on Donate. All the links are in the description. Thank you very much. I'm just going through these pictures. These are pictures of women in aviation over the years. There's a few famous ones here. You've got... Uh, Amy Johnson up here, there she is, and down here you've got Amelia Earhart, who it has to be said looks a bit like a man. Um, moving on, Lady Heath, I just want to show you the faces of some of these, because this is what I'm coming to. Mrs Hilda Hewlett, the first English woman to have a pilot's licence, look at her hair. And this is the, first, the woman's first ever woman pilot. Eloise de Roche. Now, you've seen a few pictures of them women now. Be honest, be completely honest with me, or agree with me at least. Aren't they the ugliest set of women you've ever seen in your life? Honestly. Amelia, I always thought Amelia must have been a good looking girl, but she looks like a man. None of them have got anything going for them. Again, another woman who looks like a man.
and they've got a motorbike there with the wheel turning around. This was cost a fortune for the museum to keep it going in petrol. Yeah, let's skip straight past that bit. We don't do art. I don't do art anyway. I didn't come here to see art. I came here to see aeroplanes. This is impressive. This is what some prisoners of war have made out of animal bones. Some cutlery. Even got a cork screws up there. Look. But the prisoners were given meat, you know, for for the meals, and these were made out of the bones from the animals, which they ate. So here you have. A Hellcat. Never heard of a Hellcat. Getting a bit bored of them now, to be honest. There's just too many. They all look pretty much the same. You know, two wings, little propeller at the front. It's a Grumman Avenger. We've got a submarine Seafire FMK 17. Oh, and look at this, a big pile of engines. I thought we'd already had this conversation. Who wants to come into a museum and just look at big scrap pieces of metal? I'm not into engines, or art, or poetry. Yeah, they're boring, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know there's probably some people out there, like engineers and stuff, who'll find that really interesting. Just don't do it for me. I just think they could have utilised that space a bit better. You know, have some of them rides what you put like 50 pence in and kids can rock on them. You know, we could have like aeroplane ones and it goes side to side and little three-year-olds can go on and you put your 50p in and they go, Wee! you know, three or four of them along there. They'd be making a bit of money and it'd be more interesting for the kids. This one's a Hawker Sea Fury. I'd love to give you a really good picture of it from the front. But I can't because someone's put a stupid engine in front of it. And you can't have a World War II section without throwing in a few Enfield revolvers and an M1 carbine. That's quite impressive, that's a soldier's cap. Worn by a North Korean army during the Korean War. You know, no messing about with helmets and stuff, they just had a nice, fashionable, flat cap. That's a fairy firefly mark one and the only reason i'm showing you this one is because it can find some steps and have a good look otherwise i'd have probably left it out now it's not on ground level but they've sneaked another uh, helicopter in haven't they sick of helicopters honestly we did them in r1 in video one don't need any more helicopters now. I'm not sure if these are actual wrecks or not. There's no information bars on them. And that section there is, you know, you get one in every museum where they just put videos on and loads of words, lots of words and telling you stuff on, on pieces of paper and signs. It's that part which nobody goes to, nobody's interested, it's boring. Um, so I didn't really show you around in there much. But to be honest, I've come in this section now and it doesn't look any better. This is the fairy swordfish. I want to know why they called them fairy. Can someone tell me that? It's not spelled as fairy. I don't know, it might be the American way of spelling it. Fairy look. Why are a lot of these planes called fairy? Now that says it's a G-string clip. A pilot's G-string clip. I'm a bit confused now. I'll be completely honest with you. So here's something you didn't know. That is a rivet, and it's called the Golden Rivet. And what it is, is actually just a normal ri rivet, which is painted yellow. 
and used as the last rivet to fin complete a ship, finish a ship. I didn't know that they did that. Neither did you until now. It looks like I've walked into the ladies' clothing section now. Too miserable. Mm. Looks like she might be trouble. I'd have to be very, very, very drunk. She's been round the block. And that one looks like a man. Can you get any duller than that, really? Yes, you can. So that was the art exhibition. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. <laughs> Basically, I've just been on the helicopter and it flew me for one and a half minutes, supposedly, but it didn't actually move. I think it's just a bit of a simulator. And then it's brought me here and I've just seen something land on a hair tr hair Harrier. And it's all to do with Harrier jets, is this, and people keep talking and telling you to go places, but you don't actually see the people, and then you hear engines whirring and stuff. I don't know what's going on, man. You know, since it goes on for 40 minutes, this, I don't know if I want to be doing this for 40 minutes. Phantom launch due in one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be launching a Phantom from one of the flight deck catapults in one minute. One minute. Please no idea what's going on. Bell. No idea. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in this section. It's all simulation stuff. It's not really for me. I prefer... I prefer to talk. I can't talk of nothing. Everyone's talking over me. Can you hear them all? Doing my head in. I'm getting out of here if I can. Try and find a fire exit. So that was the Fleet Air Arm. Strange name. Fleet Air Arm Museum. Very impressive. Um, not cheap. I think I got 20% off by booking online and it still came to £11-£12. But worth every penny. Um, I think I saw the best part of it in the first half and then it got a bit dull for me. Because once you've seen one plane you've seen them all but it was very interesting. Glad I went and as I said at the beginning of the video I love aeroplanes, always have. Been fascinated with them all my life. See you all next time on Digging the Coast. 365. Goodbye.